Every child is born with potential. By talking, singing, reading and rhyming with your child, you'll help them to be successful in the future. It all starts with connection. Cuddling your baby while reading a story actually helps your baby's brain to grow. What we know from the science, the neuroscience, the brain science, is that the number of words that children hear literally sculpts their brain. It builds the connections between their hearing center and their listening center. And when you read books to babies, you are giving them rich, rich vocabularies, which is literally sculpting their brain. Between birth and age three, the brain develops more than at any other time of life. Babies need to hear lots of words to give them the best start. Choose books you want to read over and over because you're going to be reading them over and over. In the womb, babies start to hear sounds as early as seven months. From the first day of their life, they will turn to the sound of your voice. Chanting or singing has a calming effect on them. It helps to teach them vocabulary. It helps them to, to learn routines that happen across the day. You can make up songs and nursery rhymes about any aspect of your child's day. And when we think about introducing those 2,000 words an hour, singing songs and, and doing nursery rhymes and finger plays with your baby is an optimal way to do that. Newborns love being cuddled and listening to the comforting sound of your voice. Of course, your baby can't talk yet, but they are listening very closely. The more a child hears words, the more the child is exposed to language in meaningful context, the more likely they will be to develop that vocabulary and have a, a broad vocabulary when they hit junior kindergarten. Cooing and babbling is your baby trying to respond, and that's them telling you their stories. That is the stage that lays the foundation of conversation for our children. So when your baby coos and babbles, you want to respond by talking back to the baby. Research has shown that the more positive words they hear during that time, the better. Touch is another very important way babies learn and build their brains. Babies who are held lots, learn lots. Exposing them to words and rhymes lays the ground for further developing awareness of all sounds and vocabulary. Try chanting or telling a rhyme during a diaper change or singing or making up a story. Don't worry at all about how you chant or sing. It's the interaction with your child that is the most important. It's normal to feel a little bit self-conscious about singing and making animal noises and doing silly things, but it's important to remember that your baby loves silly things and your baby loves you, so really it's all about that interaction. It's not about singing wonderfully, it's about singing and interacting together. Talk to your baby face to face and use their name. Children learn best through interactions with other people, not from watching a screen. Screen time is not recommended for children under two years of age. So here's the science. The science is that babies develop their ability to use language by hearing language directed towards them. The second part of the research is that babies under two, when they are exposed to screens, it can slow up some of the development. Children who are exposed to lots of hours of on-screen time are more likely to have difficulty with learning issues, with overweight, obesity, impulsivity. So the correlation, the, you know, the associations are becoming really quite high. And the message here is start very, very early as a family to be in charge of the exposure that your babies and children have to screens and have a family media plan. Turn off the TV in the background, absolutely, and know what your children are watching and that when they are watching, you're with them as well. You can make up your own stories or you can read books. Whatever you do, it's the rhythm, the repetition and the interaction that is so important. The best books to read with babies are books with thick, sturdy pages that don't rip easily. They have bold pictures that are bright or have high contrast and simple words. And they're about things that are 
everyday things that baby will be familiar with. So things like cars or pets or meal time, bath time, that kind of thing. But what's really important is not the book itself, but the experience of sharing a book with a caring adult. So really any book that you can have fun with and be enthusiastic about is going to be a good one to share with babies. Religious or cultural centres, family centres and early on have programmes for you. They're also good places to help find advice, get help and also meet with other parents. The library has so much to offer parents with infants. We have wonderful collections of board books, which are the ones with thick, sturdy pages that you can chew on and be rough with and not have to worry about it. Those are great for babies. And we also have collections of resources for parents. It is good to talk to babies in more than one language. They have great capacity for learning language, and two languages are easy to learn when they hear them from birth. Babies are born with the ability to hear the sounds of languages across all the languages of the world. So what the research says is bring on those languages. The more the better. The um, uh, babies who learn different languages have, uh, if you like, stronger highways and connections and pathways. If it's difficult to find time to read to your baby, enlist the help of friends and family members, such as grandparents, older brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles. It's important that someone shares books with your baby every single day. Don't think of this as extra work or something more to add to your busy day. But instead of plunking the little one in front of an iPad or a tablet, to have them beside you in the kitchen pulling stuff out of the, of the cupboard. While you're in the grocery store or folding laundry, talk about where you are and what you're doing. Describe your actions or name the things that you are seeing. Parents are sometimes concerned because they think their baby isn't interested in reading. Your baby may seem more interested in eating the books than reading them. It can be frustrating for sure, but it is very, very normal. You know your baby best, and you can find times when reading is most likely to be successful. Try cuddling up with a book or lullaby before bed, or make up rhymes while they are in the bath. At one month, your baby likes to look at smiling faces. Hold your baby close to your face and talk in a gentle, sing-songy voice. By three months, your baby can smile and start to make sounds, play gentle tickle games like round and round the garden. By six months, your baby can bring their hands to their mouth. Let your baby grab, chew and play with board books. It's an important part of learning how books work. By nine months, your baby likes to copy sounds and clap their hands together. Try playing a game like pat a cake. You know, it's so simple and yet so, so important. Read, sing, talk to your baby every single day, right from the start.